Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at how we can create maquette renders in Enscape. So, as you can see, I have already created most of the modeling. If you want to get the SketchUp file and follow along with this video, you can go ahead and get it in the link in the description. So, the first thing I'm going to do is to add a source of artificial lighting. Especially on maquette renders, I prefer to use artificial lighting as the main source of lighting rather than the sun or HDRI images. But we also want to keep the artificial lighting to a maximum of one or maybe two sources of light just so that we don't make the scene too cluttered with undefined shadows. I am also creating aerial top views because that is the most common way that we see physical 3D models in real life as well. That way we would be giving the viewer a more realistic feel to the render. As you can see, I am removing some of the details in the model since when we're creating real physical models, there's not a huge amount of detail going on. Just keep in mind that when we're creating maquette renders, uh, we want to act as if we were creating 3D physical models in real life. With that said, also all the elements that we would be using in our scene, we would want them to be low poly, which is just a more advanced word for saying low amount of surfaces. For example, trees or any particular furniture that we would want to be using. We're also going to be using more artificial lighting in the interior, since it would give us the feeling of a lot of real physical models where there is LED lighting on the interior. I'm also going to be playing a little bit with the visual settings, as you've probably noticed until now, we're going to be using a polystyrene mode of rendering that Enscape offers. We're going to leave the highlights on the high end of the spectrum and leave the shadows a little lower, and then from there we just want to make the image a little warmer, just so it can give us a little bit of the wood feeling on the 3D physical model. As we do that, we can see the image progresses more and more and then from there we're going to go ahead and add some bloom to the image so the lighting is more emphasized. We're going to check our camera angles once again and on the second one, what we're going to try to do is to get an idea of how the scale of the maquette is in regards to the rest of the room. And as we test out our perspective, you can notice that one point perspective is a lot better for aerial views. Rather than what we would do usually on renders, uh, we would usually use a two point perspective. So keep that in mind that when we want to create maquette renders or aerial views, always use the one point perspective. We're going to go ahead and render the last view that we had going on. And as you can notice, I'm going to take two renders of the same view one with a normal style and one with a polystyrene mode. We would need this because after we do so, we're going to be using both in post-production to make only the maquette area with polystyrene and the rest of the room, we're going to keep it with real life materials. I'm going to go ahead and edit the material on the lamp to make it look just a little bit better and we're going to give it a bit of reflection so it looks more like a matte material. And now I think the view looks much more better and we can move on to the next view. So in the second view, we're going to tweak the materials as well. Uh, on the right side of the table, we've put some tools that we would be using if we were making that maquette in real life, just so there is more context on this view. Even though uh, I still think the background of the image could have looked a little better. We're going to edit the materials on the tools as well even though they're small details, I believe that they can add a little bit of a realistic touch on the image as well. Oh, and by the way, if you get the SketchUp source file from the link in the description, you will be able to also find the settings preset as well as the HDRI that I'm using for the background of the window. I decided to add another light to the scene just to get rid of some of the dark spots that were in the room and I wanted this light to look a little colder. And now I think that the view looks much more better. We're just going to go ahead and adjust the field of view to focus on our main objective of this image, which is to show the maquette. Just like the last one, we're going to take one render with a normal mode and another one with a polystyrene mode. All right, so I think we can move on to the post-production now. 
But before we do, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe since there will be a lot more videos exploring the world of architecture. So for these images, since all I am planning to do on them is to mask out the polystyrol render, I will do it on Illustrator. There might be ways to do it easier in Photoshop, but I am more comfortable with Illustrator in the moment. And as you can see, after I created a mask, the image looks quite cool since the rest of the environment has real life materials and only the part of the maquette is done in polystyrol mode. After we're done with that, we're basically just going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other view as well. And after we created the mask, we're just going to go ahead and adjust the nodes or the points a little bit just so they're more precise and we cannot tell which part is done with the real life materials. So here's the final images. I think they came out quite cool and if you've enjoyed this video feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions please put them in the comment section down below. See you in the next one.